Welcome to Paranormal Palace Radio, where truth equals reality, and truth is often stranger than fiction. Hello everyone, welcome to Paranormal Palace Radio. This is your host, Royce the Redneck Radio Man, and joining me today is my uh, co-host who's been helping me out, uh, Gerald Riggins, and well, John uh, Strogan's also been helping, but he had somewhere he had to be today, so he's not going to be able to join us. But we do have our guest, Tommy Hawksblood, which me and him has been working on a series titled The New uh, Spiritual Movement as of a few weeks ago. And today we're doing a second installment on that. And one of the areas he wants to talk about is the, uh, I think it was the dark spiritual light he just said. He, me, is, did I say that right, Tommy? The darkness before the light. The darkness before the light, and I apologize for that. Um, he's going to tell us a little something about this, and I wanted real quick, like before we get into that, because I got a bad habit of forgetting to do this. Mention to everybody that uh, his website's www.howtoseegod.org, and don't forget that dot org is very important because there <coughs> is, pardon me, folks, a dark a dot com also. That's uh, not the same site, not the same person. And also, if y'all want to call in and ask questions, the number is 832-632-7904. And don't forget the address here is www.paranormalpalace.com. If y'all want to share that link and invite people in to join us on the uh, chat room, the actual show address is just a little bit longer. Beyond the dot .com, you got to add forward slash test hyphen radio uh, forward slash and that will take you to the exact uh, web page where the player's at or you can have them uh, go to the main page and then click on um, live radio and that'll get them there as well so Tommy I'm going to let you bring us here in on where you're at with this on the uh, darkness before the light um, and you know get us started and then if I have some questions uh I can chime in there and try to get them in. It sounds good. Well, greetings, everybody. This is Tommy Hawksblood. I'm out of Hawaii now. I grew up in Jersey most of my life, but I did travel all over the United States doing a lot of native dancing, and uh, I think I'm doing a lot of UFO work, too, for the past 15 years. Uh, we started a talk on the spiritual movement. We uh, just went past 1221, which everybody thought was going to be a big change and, and a different reaction to the planet. It seems like we cruised through it pretty good. Uh, I'm doing about three different shows, and I just found out over the past, past month that a lot of people have a lot of different ideas of what happened and what's happening now. I do want to say a lot of the stuff that's coming out is really great stories. If you like to listen to stories... And hear fantasy stories and stuff. There's a lot of people out there telling them right now. A lot of the main speakers are talking about how we've all changed and the changes that are taking place, which is why I titled the talk for today, The Darkness Before the Light. And the darkness being where we're at and what we're living in right now. Lots of people want to say that it's a certain thing right now. Uh, as far as being a spiritual wave of this giant energy wave that's purifying everybody, making everybody spiritual, raising everybody's level of awareness and consciousness. I wish that was true. I wish that's where we're at. Uh, but I'll, I'll, after doing this whole thing today, I hope you understand that it's so far from where we're at and where we should be. All right. Uh, my, my, my journey started when I was young, very young. And I started being visited by a deity, which I didn't know who it was. Uh, I saw my first UFO. I saw my first alien. And lots of things started happening when I was young. Uh, later today, the other part of this uh, show that we're doing, I might get into the spiritual abuse, which is a serious part of what's happening. As far as when people say we're going into the spiritual wave, that... Uh, supposed to hit everybody and change the world. I want, to, I want to give you something to think about, which I kind of got into a little bit the last time. 
Uh, we accept the idea that we're all going to raise to a higher consciousness. I w- I'm asking everybody that's listening, think about that. What would that mean to you? And then when they also mention the word, we're all connected. Think about those two things as I go through some of the stuff we're going to talk about today. Because most people relate them to the same thing, that it's this wave and we're going to be at this spiritual joining point. To me, like I said, when I was little, I went through a lot of abuse, a lot of different things at the same time. And I was always able to step back and look at it from outside my body. Because when you're in the body, your mind's in control, and you're listening to the programs that people tell you and what your friends teach you and tell you, and it conditions it. And as you get a little older, when you get into religions and things like that, and you get more programming which the mind accepts. And you start reading and then everything else is other people's ideas of what they think is right. But like I said, think about what spiritual awakening would be to you. And when I, when I get into that, I say the first thing you have to talk about when you talk about spiritual, what does spiritual really mean? The average person, when I ask them, well, what spiritual mean to you? Well, they talk about, oh, well, we're all one and we're part of God and we talk about peace and love. Right? Do you see that as a reflection on the planet? Do you see that as a reflection of the things that are happening? Right? Most people run away from the truth. And when I say truth, right away a person says, well, that's your truth. Right? What I'm trying to do when I speak and when I talk about things, I talk about the physical reality and spiritual reality, spirituality when it's actually happening right now. And how do you prove that? Let me try to explain that. When I say truth, it's all the things that I experienced in my life that I have proven to myself that's real, that does exist. Mm-hmm. All right, and that entails uh, the way we live our life, how we act with people, and what we try to bring out into this world. You can think when you become spiritual, it gets easier. It doesn't. If the world thinks that just because we get spiritual it makes everything on the planet easier, it's really just the opposite. And when I said think about what it means to you, think about what it means to planet Earth and the number of people that are on it. In a world filled with 7 billion people, supposedly going to raise to a higher level, that might be good. But imagine when other people's definition of spiritual comes free will. And everybody's idea of free will is a little different. But in reality, again, I say the real place, planet Earth, the laws of free will are guided by the laws of the state and the country that you live in. You could say and believe anything you want, but you just can't do them or get caught doing them. So with that, when you go into this world and you say, I'm becoming spiritual, what are you really becoming and what are you doing? For me, it's been a, a long process. I'm 60 years old as of December. And... uh I, I have to say, I went through many religions, many different paths, and studied with many different shamans, medicine people, and spiritual beings on the inner world. So my teachings aren't as grounded to a book, a uh, static book, or somebody else's ideas of what should be. Now, teachings that are in the Bible, that are also in like the Emerald Tablets, uh, are probably the most important to the planet. Not because they have really good information, but because they're accepted by most of the people. And ideas become religions or passed by the amount of people and accept them. Uh, witchcraft was, was not really accepted for a very long time. And I know when I was young, my, my friend that I was involved with went to court and they actually overturned the, the court system in Jersey making witchcraft legal. And, and classifying it as a religion. I'm not saying I don't know how, we, how the laws are right now in the United States, but I know that some states that are trying to pass laws to stop psychics from doing their work. I'm not going to say whether it's good or bad, uh, because there's many false psychics out there and people claiming to be that, which is not a good thing for the world, or people that go to them. 
I'm interested in here because here, I was a magician for 25 years of my life, stage magician. So I learned a lot about the illusionary world, the people that they accept. Most magicians do many of magical tricks, and people think they really do them. And the only reason why is because they don't know how they did them, so they get right. a thrill. But for me, I was able to look at any trick and figure out how it's done within a day or two. If I couldn't figure it out right away, I would put it on a piece of paper, draw it, and I'd be able to see through the, the illusion. Why I say that? Uh, I was a magician for 25 years. I work with a lot of mentalists and, and uh, psychics and, and, and all those kind of words. For me personally, I found many in the stage world, like uh, who I learned, I learned hypnosis when I was 14. But Kreskin was considered the top magician at the time. He was a he did hypnosis and he did mediumship and he actually read to people psychic readings uh, in the show and stuff. But there's tricks to everything that he did. And when I learned by studying Houdini, who actually gave me a lot of my ideas for magic, was another person that spent 10 years, of the last 10 years of his life, trying to prove that the psychic world really exists. Now, before I go any further, I want to say two things. I'm a realist. I live my life based on the truth that I actually experience and can prove to myself. All right, the second part of it is, okay, that's one part. But for me, spirituality is as real as it gets because I prove these experiences and I know how real they are. But I work with some of the best that I consider the best that I can prove that they were really claiming certain things that I can prove. Well, if and you don't mind me interrupting here real quick, Tommy, while I was listening, <coughs> a thought just came to me real quick like uh, when you said you're a realist. And you've said this on my show Oh, almost every show you've been on, and I don't have a problem with that, don't get me wrong. It's just that for some odd reason, it just came to me to ask, how does a person know if they're really a realist, or is being a realist really an illusion to some degree? You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, I'm glad you asked the question, but it's real simple. A realist, which I claim to be, I live on actual facts that are happening on the planet. If you don't eat, you die. You don't breathe air, you die. You, you eat what you like. I mean, you deal with people, but you say the world's perfect when you see other people, other countries starving. So I base a lot of my truth on physical, actual events. I mean, most New Age people that claim to be psychic and channelers will say this wave's coming, it's affecting everybody, uh, it's an energy field, and they talk about things that you can't prove to yourself even, and you really can't prove at all. And then again, it's very limited. Because when New Age people say everything's the way it should be and everything's perfect, maybe in their little world where they live, their car, their house, they're not taking in the whole world ever. Very few psychics will talk about the truth of what's happening on the planet in the present moment. I always live in the present moment like the earthquakes that are happening around the world right now. The chemtrails are spraying over the planet every day. That's reality. Most people say, oh, that's nothing. You can't go into a spiritual place if you're not aware of the physical problems. Now, that's why I put up the other part of my show that I want to do is spiritual abuse. If you go against that, you can say everything's perfect. And then, then the word spiritual really doesn't exist. Because when everybody says everything's perfect, in the world, the 4% of the planet that are rich and healthy and, and live in a house, have food and everything, doesn't compare to the 94% of the planet that's starving, don't know where the next meal is going to come from, sickness, have no idea about government as far as other people's governments, religions, other than what's right there in front of them. And when I say a realist, I'm not creating imaginary ideas. Yes, I had many spiritual experiences but they don't change how I talk about what's happening. Again, when I mention spiritual abuse, it's what people do in the name of being spiritual or religious that's tearing the planet, planet apart. Now, in the New Age world, uh, which is most people uh, that are in it, believe that the Bible is not real. It's a dogmatic book created. 
to control people. I'm not going to say what I, I'm not going to say how I agree with that. I mean, I want to explain this first. They believe that the whole Bible was created, uh, and it's not real story. Now, and I'm kind of like that it, myself. Sorry well, for interrupting, but I'm, I'm just going to, thought I'd throw that out there that from my research, I kind of tend to agree with that group of people. Well, here's something, uh, I don't want to get into too deep, but like, I, I was on a show yesterday, and we had this big name speaker talking about how religions are false, and they're going to be slowly taken away, the idea of God's going to be stripped away, and I said, for non-spiritual people, yes, but for spiritual people, it will only grow stronger. Now, on the Bible, the Bible was written by people that wrote stories for other people. Jesus' followers couldn't even write, so only one of his followers could even write. So most of the stories were translated by other people later, all right? And you know when somebody else tells a story, it's different. Now, when Constantine tried to put the Bible together, he had 40 Gospels, and he chose four. And those four are a lot different than the other 40. If you go into Down and Thomas's, Mary Magdalene's, and Judas's, uh, you'll we'll see such a different teaching. So never mind when Constantine worked with a bunch of people to put this together, they decided to create some kind of boundaries where they can keep people in control. And that's why the Bible was created. But, I mean, I don't want to debate that all well, the facts are real enough. Now, physically proven, again, I say a realist. I base my thing on truth. The scientists have proved uh, that, okay, when Sodom and Gomorrah happened, the reason why it happened, I mean, it wasn't like uh, some alien stood there or some spiritual being shot bolts of lightning down. It was a meteor shower that bombarded the planet, and they actually proved that. The same as uh, in Moses' time. They proved how the different things happened. Not like it was an angel just spreading gas over the planet, killing all the children. Those things were actually proven by the uh, the land area, the, the resources, and, and the time checking on that, on those resources. So what, here's what I'm trying to get at. The Bible has a lot of facts in it. They oh, I agree twisted. with that. They do get twisted and rearranged for somebody else's benefit or whoever's writing the story. Again, I, I, I became aware of most of my past lives, which I think is very important for most people to do. And if you're not aware of them, uh, you have a lot of knowledge you won't, you won't get until you reincarnate a bunch more times. That's an important point people, you bring up. I mean, because say, the Bible... Oh, good, good. I'm sorry, uh, Tom, I was going to say it's an important point you bring it up. I, I wanted to get it while you were there because you might forget it later on. But um, a lot of people can tell you that the Bible, they believe in... The Bible teaches against reincarnation when in actuality there are some places that allude to, you know, reincarnation. So bringing up the point of reincarnation in your past lives is, uh, I think, uh, an interesting point while you're on the subject of the Bible, in other words. And I wanted to bring that up to you to see if you wanted to elaborate on that, you know, fast it more. Well, well, well that's very important because uh, if you don't believe in reincarnation, you never will perceive all that information that you already obtained. So the people that say reincarnation doesn't exist, you know, see, that's where you can say, well, that's a uh, new age thing or that's this. If you listen to the stories in the Bible and try to read through them, when they met with the angels, even when Jesus died, was killed, and he came back to visit them, how did they really see him? What was really happening? That was Jesus' teachings that were never put in the Bible. It wasn't like he became a solid body, came back, and stood there so they can touch him and all that kind of stuff. The story was kind of rearranged for people to understand it. Because Jesus' teachings were kind of like outward in the Bible, because basically, I don't want to get into that right now, but those, those ideas of what, what was really happening as far as soul, spirit, death of a soul, reincarnation, right? If you want to use a word, Reincarnation means the soul coming back. But if it doesn't have a physical body, all right, which Jesus did come back as, without the physical body, how did these people see him? The physical senses could not see him. It was just psychic senses that were able to see it. And that's what they had awakened. So Mary Magdalene had to spend 
a long time, well, a period of time, trying to teach Peter uh, how to how to do this contemplation, and he didn't want to listen to it because she was a woman. Finally, he decided to, and that's when he actually met Jesus again, because Jesus was teaching about soul travel, being able to travel, to be with soul, to be aware of it. And if you go into all the rings of light to put around them, when somebody's a spiritual being or a spiritual person, that aura gets bigger and bigger by how spiritual they are. And, again, all these things are hard to say to somebody that doesn't have the experience of stepping out of their body or becoming aware of their past lives. I mean, a lot of that's limited. Not saying that it's wrong or false or fake or make-believe. Just because you don't experience it doesn't mean it's not real. I mean, I'm at the point, if I didn't see a UFO, if I didn't see an alien, if I didn't see a Bigfoot, would I believe in them? Yes, I always did. And maybe that's what allowed me to see them when I did. Because when you spiritually open your eyes, you can see a thousand times bigger, greater, more than you can when you don't use it. If you use the mind's eye, which is limited to the two, two things that are in your head called eyes, you see very little. You see one veil. And there's multiple dimensions existing and going on and different things. And you can't see that with the physical eyes. Getting back to being in the incarnation, when I became aware of my incarnations, I always checked out a lot of the information as much as I could. Uh, but then I pieced it together with what's happening now. What people say, now they're talking about the Anunnaki and they're talking about this race and that race. And if you spot with Atlantis, which wasn't the true name, because uh, they didn't have word, too many words in Atlantis. They spoke telepathy, and it wasn't like they had a 1,000 or 2,000 words to use on a daily basis. But they, the energy was there, getting into the spiritual side of things, which we lost. And when Atlantis went down, there were nine races. Five races left the physical world because they spiritually grew. And they are the races such as the blue race and the green race white race, the crystal race, I should say, uh, the four that stayed black, white, yellow, and red, uh, were less spiritual. Yes, they were. They were farmers and miners. That's all they were. It had nothing to do with spirituality. That word became, uh, it started growing on people rather recently. In the old days, I mean, when they worshipped these, I mean, statues and things, what spiritual things were going on? First, they were worshiping aliens. So if you consider that spiritual, when all these other stories were created, to turn around and say that's what Jesus was teaching, or even Buddha, is so limited. Because when you start understanding what they actually taught and what, and what, what the results are, if you can bring them into your life, you can help change it in a great way. Getting back to this idea, here's, here's what I want to put out there today. The darkness. The darkness is the other side of every person that lives. It's the part that people hide from, the people that, the side of you that you don't want to face. Right? It's, it's called the demon inside or facing the dragon. Uh, there's a lot of wor- words and, and translations in different countries how they talk about that. But until you're ready to let go of that side of it or face it and understand it, You'll always be the effect of programmed information rather than spiritual information that you get from yourself or your spirit. Because that's what helps the mind lock in the soul into the physical body. And they are separate. Uh, I mean, that you can debate whether mind and spirit are the same or not. Uh, because when your body dies, your brain dies. And that's what all thoughts pertain to be. But then more recent research proves there's a crystal inside the brain. And that crystal holds all your knowledge. And if you want to go to, I'm not sure if it's Easter Island, when it had all these skeletons, and all the skulls were cut with circular holes in the top of them, and I think there's 124 skeletons. Why that happened is this race came down and took all the crystals out of all those beings, people, for their knowledge. I mean, that's, I can't prove that to you. Again, like I said, the skeletons were found. They had their skulls cut in a complete circle on the top. And in the time frame that it happened, they didn't have tools like that. And why would they do that? And all these skeletons were in different kind of positions. It's not like they were all flat or laying this way. They were all sitting in different kind of positions, and their skulls were cut, and their, that, they don't know what happened, but that's what they assumed happened. So, now, what's it have to do with right now? Not much. The past is the past, but 
we easily learn from the past, which we don't. In general, mankind has been a warring creature since they were put here. And why is that? Because the two races that, that pretend to be God to them gave them a lot of programs in their mind to work with. And as we get through uh, this idea of darkness, when, in, in the Bible days, when they start talking about demons, or even in the, uh, in the older times, in it, Hindu scripts and stuff, they talk about the deities. There was good deities and bad deities. All right. And now, now in the newest time frame, that's 2,000 years, it became angels. So people want to see everything spiritual as looking like a human, like a person. They justify Jesus as God because he looks human. And they say, in his image, man wrote that. God didn't. God can't say that we're in its image. It wouldn't, because we're not. If we think we look like God, or we have the ability of God, we're really in a delusion. All right. Uh, the darkness, which I want to get into, is what's affecting the planet in the present moment. And that's why I say spiritual abuse. What things are really happening to us and the people around us? People believe in angels. People don't believe in the demon or the devil. People believe in spiritual, but they don't believe in the darkness. Uh, they try to hide from it. I use hide because it exists whether you want to... I mean, in the physical world, we have a lot of balances going on with light and dark and good and bad, but they do exist. There's two sides of everything. Uh, you can pretend, pretend that there isn't, that there's only the right and the only, whatever happens is right. You can accept that. But if, if everybody sat there and said everything's the way it's supposed to be and didn't eat, how far would it go? If everybody ate rat poison, how far would it go? We, we have to be realistic that there's something bad and good going on in every action we create and do. And then the next thing is, how do we act upon that? And what are we willing, where are we willing to step forward from there? All right, in my time frame, I said I got involved with hypnosis when I was young. I started with group hypnosis, uh, because that's what Kreskin was doing. But I met an army hypnotist, and he worked with me when I was about 16. And I was teaching him magic, and he was teaching me techniques for working with hypnosis. And he proved something that the, that the whole hypnosis board accepts our, that they accept our lives, which are not real. Uh, there's a lot of people claiming a lot of things about hypnosis. Now, they do go against your, your spirit because you can get somebody to do whatever you want if you hypnotize them right, which they say that you can't do. They also say you can't be hypnotized if you don't want to be. Also, another lie. All right, and I said, I worked with an hypnotist. He was proving that in the mid-60s. Uh, I don't know, he did it sooner than that. Sorry, when I was working with him, it was later in the end of the 60s. Uh, he proved that if you hypnotize a person, they'll shoot their wife or brother or a cousin or anybody if they're programmed with an idea that when you see that person, oh, it's not real, this is, and then they, it's, uh, government needs a lot of different words for that now. They'll even turn their back on their God. Yeah, but I'm saying it's being able to make them see something that's not real, giving them a false implanted idea which they accept as reality. All right, and that's a, and that's real. I did it. I did it with my friends. I was hypnotizing kids when I was 14, my best friends, and I had them doing all the weirdest, strangest things. And I, and I proved it to my brother. He goes, "Oh, you can't do that." And I said, "Watch this. Uh, anything." So when you say you can't be, they always try to push that out there and things. Then when now, like, the whole thing with the alien abductions, which I do a lot of work with, and, and psychic abductees and psychic implants, uh, there's a lot of work that has been done, but most hypnotists will not go into there in the right way because most hypnotists do not believe in aliens. If you work with somebody that says they were abducted or thinks they were abducted, you're going to try to make them walk through it and, and, and say that it wasn't real, that it was a bad dream, or you can just try to twist it. There are a few hypnotists out there saying that it's real and work with people with that. But then again, they're not truly founded in the understanding of what God is. Uh, yes, I do totally believe in a God. I know it's real and, and it's uh, the most important thing in, in life and in the universe and, and everything. But uh, the deities and lower gods, which... Uh, people accept as gods. 
or have much more play with people and things like that. When the person's hypnotized and they were abducted, if you're not aware that these aliens exist or how to even deal with them, what their belief systems are, with anything about them, how can you work with a person that's working with them? You really can't. So what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of things that I learned, and that's why I say I'm a realist. I learn by my experience, by doing things, and, and I do anything to prove it to myself whether it's real or not, how it will affect us or how it won't affect us. So when people say, well, hypnotists are this, it's a bunch of lies out there. Uh, so getting to the point when you work with a person, there's abductions from the government, there's abductions from aliens, and then we have spiritual or psychic abductions, which is from demons or, or dark side entities. So you have to be aware of them and understand them to work with somebody that's being attacked by them. So there's a lot of things that, that are going on right now. And an abduction, well, by all three, I should say, has risen to such a high level right now. I have one friend who does 320 uh, exorcisms in a year. And that's a lot. That's like every day and sometimes two a day here and there. Uh, is it fast? Some people can be done taken out of that problem very fast. Some people take a little longer. Remember, the original movie, The Exorcist, if you didn't see it, watch it. Because it's based on actual facts. It wasn't a girl, it was a, a boy, but the actual facts of what happened were real. The priest dying, the other priest dying, all those things. Because they were dealing with something, they did not know what it was. If you believe in the Bible and you don't understand God or spirit, it's still a book. It has no truth to you. So if you're going to try to go out there and do exorcisms or get involved with that, how can you deal with it? You're just reading what somebody says, and it doesn't get into detail and things like that very much in the Bible. So even the Pope right now, as of this moment, is hiring people to do exorcisms for him. All right? And it's very little known, but I know a few people I do that are being kind of... Uh, directed through the Pope to do these things. Because, again, Pope has, and this might bother a lot of people, how much do you think the Pope knows about God that you don't, or anybody else? Most That's a good question. Very, little, very few people have any real awareness of what God truly is. Most people have an idea of what they want God to be, or what they don't want it to be. Right? And that's a limitation to what God truly is. Uh, when, when people in the New Age world say we're all one, what are they all one with? Each other? Everybody on this planet thinks different, acts different. What are you one with? What, then if you want to become one, what are you going to agree with all these people on this planet? What idea can 7 billion people accept and say, well, that's what we want? World peace, world love? Well, world, pe world peace might be a good thing, but world love? I mean, it's being twisted and abused every day, and it's getting worse on a yearly basis now. With polyism and multiple sex being accepted and different kinds of sexual acts are, are accepted and all those kind of things. So are we moving spiritually? Uh, people say yes, and I say, are you looking at the facts? Are you dealing with what's happening in reality, meaning this present moment on this planet? Are you looking at the abuse going on to children and women? Are you aware of, of people starving around the planet? See, people base their teachings, as long as they got money, and if they got a lot of money, they can get whatever they want, as long as they live in a nice house and have a nice car. They put their person in the jungle for, for two months and then let them come out and see how they feel when they come out of there. They're going to feel a lot different. So that's why, when I say realist, and that's why I say I am, how do you know if you're a realist? When you start doubting all these stories that you've heard and want to prove them. You want to find out, does God really exist? That's something you really need to do. What happens when you die? That's the most important thing any soul can learn in the present lifetime. Because without that, dying is the most scariest thing. And then again, you have no awareness of anything that's going to happen after. And if there is anything after you die. Yes, uh, like I, I talked about this last time about how we need spiritual exercise to work with that can put you in tune with that energy and learn how to do that. Uh, and I said, you need to do that before you die. Like out of that, 
near-death experience puts you in an out-of-body experience. And that takes you one step closer to understanding spirit and the inner worlds. Without that, it's like trying to describe a spaceship on another planet to somebody that doesn't even, that, to a caveman and doesn't even saw a car. How do you do that? Uh, and then the words don't even ring true to this person. Because we create words as we create inventions and, and techniques. But as they say we move forward spiritually, we're creating a greater science of the abuse of the planet. Even though all the New Age people say, well, we want organic food. You want organic food in a chemically sprayed world. How is that possible? You have toxic water on every part of the planet. How are you going to have pure water? I mean, we talk about these things. I'm not saying you can, you can purify the water. You can purify the air. But as far as, like, in, in sealed tight rooms, uh, completely closed off, like the, the underground bases that the Army has and secret uh, organizations have. So, yeah, that's one way. But in reality, again, reality, you're living in a house and you have a giant field in the back of your house. It's being sprayed with chemicals. So to say we have pure food, organic food. Here's something I only learned recently. Milk alone, if it can last more than four days, milk can't last more than four days, right, whether you keep it refrigerated or not, if it does, it's exposed to radiation. Now, there, this, this has been passed 25 years ago, even longer. You're allowed to expose milk to radiation to a certain level and not ha- and you don't have to label that. As long as it's over a certain amount, it's not considered dangerous. So when you see milk that says it's good for 30 days, something is totally wrong. When you get milk in a container that says good for three months, something's totally wrong. All right. So New Age people talk about health when they refuse to look at the facts that there's no such thing as healthy food. The dirt on the planet has lost its enzymes that actually make it feed plants when it grows in the dirt. That causes vegetables and plants to lose anywhere from 50 to 70% of the actual vitamins and minerals they have. So if you look back 50 years ago and take an apple and compare it to an apple today, you will see how, how deficient the apple today is compared to what it used to be. In the old days, they used to say, eat an apple a day and you'll, be a, you'll live forever. And that was then. It's not, the same, it's not the same truth today with the way we contaminated the planet, which is, is a very scary thing because mm. all these New Age people believe that everything's perfect, everything's healthy. It costs a lot more money. Is it more healthy? Well, that's, again, like I said, you really have to analyze the food and have it checked for uh, any kind of deficiencies or what, how, how strong any vitamins are really in it. Whatever food you choose to eat, so uh, I don't want to get into food too much, but when we talk about like how we're moving into the spiritual world and spiritual people talk about organic food and, and all these things, but we have to deal with the population. Again, people don't want to hear 7 billion people's ideas of what's happening because most people have no idea. But in these other countries where they're being bombed and, and killed and stuff like that, do they, do they have any idea? No. Do they have an understanding? No. Are they waiting for organic food to be delivered? No. So we deal, we hear people that have money to talk, or people that pay these people to talk. Now, I just wrote a letter to Al Gore yesterday. All right? If anybody knows anything about Al Gore, he came out with the word global warming. He was given that word from somebody else. And that person was involved with the uh, United Nations and stuff way back then. And he was thrown into the country, and he's in another country. He can't even come back to the United States. But he was the one that started funding Mr. Al Gore to go around and promote global warming. Al Gore has been doing it. People accept him as like the key authority on global warming. Very few people wanted, I mean, getting him heard to just go on him, which people should check out. Uh, what the true story behind that is, and what does global warming really mean? Absolutely nothing. It was a created word to make money. Al Gore became a millionaire on this word. Except, <laughs> Mr. Al Gore doesn't talk about the serious problems which are causing global warming. Why is that? I mean, when he came out with the uh, antifreeze in the car was the danger zone for a planet, that it was destroying our ozone and everything, so they re- resold us more expensive antifreeze. You know, uh, the same company created the new one just to charge more money for it. 
Uh, it was a game. Freon doesn't rise into the atmosphere like they said it did. I mean, all these stories about that, uh, well, we're, we're losing our ozone because of cars. Well, that's one problem. Emissions is a problem. It's only a small part of it. So we don't talk about the harp system. We don't talk about the chemtrails. Why not? Because they're the ones that are affecting the weather. They're the ones that are changing the weather. And when they increase volcanoes or earthquakes, it causes more problems that increase the changes, like the water conditions in the ocean and things. So Al Gore doesn't talk about the problems, just the places where he can make money or people can make money off of it. Like corporations that pollute just have to pay more money when they pollute. They don't close them down. Even in Hawaii, we've got two uh, uh, sugar mines, uh, fax manufacturers. One of them's super old, and there was a brand new one. They were able to go and get an order against the new one because they don't have the right filters on it and everything, but they can't make them do anything to the old one. And that's the one that's putting out this black smog, black fog and toxic air every night, and, and it's polluting the, the ocean. I mean, the, the, if you go over to the one side where the water actually goes into the ocean, it's so gross. So here we have this horrible thing going on, and people, like, override it. And when we talk about global warming, which is the spiritual uh, New Age people's really important thing, are we going to help the planet? The planet needs no help. The only help the planet needs is just to leave it alone. And what I mean by that, we talk about spiritual awareness. When we close, close off a river... Or, or, or create a, we stop all the streams. Consider that like the blood flow of your body. When you stop and dam up waters that's supposed to be flowing, it changes that part of the planet. So mankind has been destructively changing environment, building cities on top of ground and things. It's a different kind of pressure. It's extracting, we extract all the oil out of the planet. All these things, when, when people talk about being spiritual and we become more aware, Aware of what? What you're doing to the planet? If you are, you go back to the, to the, to the beginning. And live, live in peace with the planet. It means live where you live, eating with the fruits and vegetables, whatever grows there, and you would, and stay that way. You wouldn't be building cities and building spaceships and all these other things. Some people say they want to become more aware and grow in consciousness. What consciousness are they going to grow aware of? On the other hand, they don't want to accept that there's a real God up there. Very few people want to realize or understand what God is. The pitch. When I wrote my first book, How to See God, I put it out there because people really need to at least think about that and work on it. Not the idea that we're all one and we all are God. And now the New Age people classify God as source. Oh, the source of energy. It's not an energy. It's not just energy. Everything's energy. So are you just saying, oh, yeah, I'm energy, too. But do you have an awareness? Do you have a consciousness? Do you have a soul? A rock doesn't have a soul. Whether people want to accept that or not, a tree, I mean, it grows, it dies. The trees live a long time in music. But in general, we're talking about soul, which makes us separate from all other things. And that soul has an awareness that all those other things don't. An animal doesn't have any awareness of reincarnating in all those aspects or understanding gods and things. Both it knows how to eat, how to have sex and produce. Uh, in general, most animals don't have sex for fun. Uh, and they do it only a few times a year. So are they as ab- abnormal as the human race? I don't think so. I think they're better off. Because mankind has deteriorated to sexual ideas and, and creating this world of sex. That's the only thing that matters. And it's the only thing that mattered for probably the past 30,000 years. Now, to clarify on that, if you don't mind, Tommy, are you sure. um, are you talking about uh, like sexual behavior as a sin? Or are you referring to uh, making it a priority, being a uh, a thing that distracts you away from the main goal? Well, it's it's really both because sex is what's on guys' mind like every every minute, thoughts flash and ideas. All right, uh, the actual sexual act is usually based on having a sexual act, not on creating a child or just being in, 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 in uh, what's, what would be the right word, but being in love with a person and experiencing the aspect of just touching each other. Uh, now, everything is based on sales, which is based on women. 
sex objects, sexual objects being implanted in everything you see, even if it's food, a car, there's always a woman implanted, a beautiful woman, and it's the ideas that are implanted in man, which they allow because they like it or they want it. Uh, going back to the sexual ideas that we're allowed to have and, and do and create. Yes, some countries are allowed to have Tibet. I mean, other countries, they have different laws and rules on marriages, how many women they can have or how many husbands they can have. But in the United States, basically, we're supposed to be two. And now they're changing that to having two males, two females, whatever it is. So I use a word, and I call it morals. We have lost 90% of all our morals in society. Morals that kept us from doing perverted things on TV and saying perverted things and showing perverted things all the time. I mean, you can't watch a TV show without seeing somebody going in the bathroom or, I mean, peeing or farting and all these things that are pushed on every show now for a simple joke or to, to make people, I don't know, it, it affects people because they accept it more. I mean, if you were sitting at a dinner table and two people did something, I mean, it would upset everybody. Uh, so we're kind of watering our spiritual protection and our morals, which are very connected, to a world where there are none. The games they put out there for children to play strip these poor children of their consciousness and program it. Uh, and they're, most of them are very bad. I don't know how many games people played or want to play or ever tried to play. They're, I mean, Grand Theft Auto is I mean, one, two, three, four, five, but up to five now. And that a game rolling play. You could be the bad guy, you could be the good guy, you could go around beating people up, you could go around arresting people. It's just programming children to accept a different reality. And that's a reality without morals. I mean, when, uh, uh, what's those guys that did, uh, Jackass came out, they showed that you can do anything stupid and get paid good money and make it famous. Now that guy's producing a movie, he's doing lots of things. But we accept that. We laugh. We laugh at God. And that's what we're doing. As long as we allow our morals to be stripped away from us, the idea that there is a God, to being filled with we are God, uh, and that's a serious problem to the planet. If we accept we are God, can you play the role? Can you even fit into the role? Well, maybe the role that you create that your God is. Oh, God loves everybody. I love everybody. And here's a word which becomes very popular among New Age people, unconditional love. When you talk to people in that realm of what's happening, reality, all right, they say, well, we give everything unconditional love. I don't know who was the first person. I tried to find out who was the first person to say that. Who was the first person to bring that idea out to the world in a great way? And why is it accepted? All right? If we go in, here's where we go back in time. When man created the idea of hell, uh, for a reason. Because when a man did something, he felt, in his consciousness, he felt something was wrong. How does he forgive himself for it? Well, he figured if he gets everybody else to agree on it, it, it won't matter. It'll be forgiven. So when they when they get a consciousness of people to accept something, like, oh, we're all forgiven or we're all this, it becomes washed away. So rather than assuming that we're on a planet that is very close to what hell really is, uh, we'll make it heaven. I get enough people to believe it, we'll call it heaven. So rather than call it hell, we'll call it heaven. Now, on this planet, and here's, here's where you can prove it to yourself. On this planet, is the only place soul being trapped in the physical body can experience and see horrible, horrible things, experience horrible pains on a daily basis. When you step out of the physical body, you no longer have the body, the nervous system, the mind, uh, the, the, the nerves that go through every, body, every part of your body, bringing these feelings and emotions through it, all right? You don't have that no more. So if you were a spirit, not even a spiritual being, you died, left your body, how would I stick pains in you or how would I burn you or how would I do anything? Because you, you can't feel it. So the idea that hell somewhere else is, is, a, is a delusion that man created because it wants to believe that it can be better. And by making the world consciousness accept that idea, uh, they feel free of it. So in that term, they cut down on the idea of hell. 
which will make it another place that you'll go if you're dead. All right? And where would that be? Earth. If, if you were going to be put somewhere to suffer, you'd come back to planet Earth because you, you get old. You, things happen to you. Everything on here. The soul doesn't change except you just get brighter with light. It's light. When, the more it learns and becomes, the, the greater the light around it becomes. But it doesn't feel pain. It doesn't go through that. So without understanding what soul is, how can you understand something like what God is? All right. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things that I'll get into with that too, but as far as the God thing, if you're going to experience God or want to, there's many ways to go about doing that. And the first thing is you need to learn how to step out of the physical body. I spent 25 years traveling different realms and places. Uh, not that I just said I'm going to go wherever I want. I worked with angels and my protectors for a few years, and they gave me more rights. And then you stand before higher gods, I call them little gods, which allow you to go to the next realm. When I say next realm, I mean the, the world beyond the astral plane. Every soul can go to the astral plane when they die. It's no great thing. It's not like it's hell. It's just where it goes to reform itself to figure out what's, what it's going to go or what's going to happen to it in its next step. And a lot of that is not based on what they want. Which most new age people say, well, I can come back and do this or I can come. Maybe you can. So it usually moves forward. And as far as you become spiritually, you can take that with you. But you just can't become super spiritual because you die. Most people, and, and, I, and I say that because I deal with lots of people. And they say, well, the being that I work with and, and this, and they say these things, uh, they have this ability to accept whatever they hear. And, and I'm, um, I'm really hardcore. I don't believe much of what I read, and I know much of it's lies. And people say, well, that's just your level of uh, whatever. Now, when you start understanding truth, you can see beyond the illusion. And my second book is Truth Beyond the Illusion. Because when you're looking at illusions, you accept them as real at, at one level. And the truth never really changes. It's a matter of how much or more open to it you become. All right. And by each level of awareness is the more you're willing to give up, the more you're willing to do to stay in that. Simple thing. All right. Ten commandments is thou shalt not kill. Moses comes off the mountain and kills a bunch of people, 3,000 people. Does that sound like uh, he understood what he was reading or what he was even saying? All right. Then he brings these people to the promised land. And he walks them around for four generations, which means everybody that he took out originally died before they got there. All right. Again, when they got there, he couldn't go there. The story is not really put out in the Bible because Moses didn't want to put that out there. But funny, the people that got to the promised land killed everybody that was where they went to take it over. So we have these truths that are written in the Bible. And I had to beat somebody on that just recently because, oh, no, Moses didn't. They didn't do that. They walked into a spiritual city. No, it wasn't a spiritual city. And as long as you believe, and here's the, the, the worst belief that is, that if you believe planet Earth is spiritual anywhere, you're in trouble. It doesn't reside in the Earth. It resides in soul. And people think they can walk the planet and find a spiritual city or a spiritual place. And at that time, I told everybody, you're going into a spiritual city. Well, or or holy mean, ground, as I like to uh, refer to it. Sorry, what was that? I, I, I said, story. or holy ground, as I like to refer to it. Yeah, exactly. Now, Native people classify grounds that are holy because they put their bodies, their bodies, their skeletons of people that would die there, and that's holy. But if you hold those spirits there, it's not holy. It's it's a prison. Those spirits need to be released. And I and I, I could go into whole stories about that where I do my UFO work. It was an area, a Native burial ground. And a bunch of the elders come from all over the United States to come there to do things, which I already freed all the spirits. And when they got there, they realized that. Uh, but as far as holy ground, there's really nothing more holy. You've got vortexes on the planet. Inside these vortexes is multiple uh, energy waves. When I was dealing up the Wanaku, the vortex that we were playing in was called the Wanaku vortex. Basically, it's where the whole Monto project came out of, Philadelphia experiment came out of. So yeah, it is probably the most hardcore vortexes on the planet. I mean, there's some vortexes in Sedona, there's some in Tibet, there's some uh, in different places. But what happens when you go into these vortexes? 
one that I played in, I saw multiple creatures and beings and weird things. And I, we brought a few people there because most people were not ready to deal with that. All right. Uh, we were taking pictures of anything from four or five foot mushrooms, fish flying through the air, uh, invisible creatures that we got the all print when it crashed into the ground. I mean, we shot every kind of weird thing that was possible or totally impossible. So a vortex is something different than sacred ground. Uh, sacred ground would be a place where you agree is sacred for the idea that we have to protect those people that go there. Uh, but is it really sacred? We don't know what sacred means because all things are sacred if we look at it from a real viewpoint rather than a program viewpoint. In the United States, we consider the United States more spiritual than other countries, which we bomb and blow up children and villages and towns. So how do, how do we justify those words? That's where it all fits into spiritual abuse. Doing, the names of, doing things in the name of God or spirit, which are really against what it truly means. So uh, question, I mean, I'll, it's, it's on the hour. Do you want to, like, have any questions? Do you want to bring anything out? Fast to talk about? Actually, before we do, let's ask Gerald if he has any questions he'd like to throw in there. Well, I had a few, and, and I do have one, but uh, most of them um, Tommy has addressed. Um, Tommy, uh, one of the questions I do have is, you know, I'm I'm physically disabled, and I'm interested in a lot of what you were talking about about out of body experiences. Um. In, in your book it covers some of the or more difficult for someone with a physical disability to achieve that? Oh, well, no, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, no, as long as you are aware of being alive, you can do it. Uh, do it if you ever want to call me directly or work with me. I, I'll, I'll work with you directly. Uh, I will go into, like, I, I think I was going to kind of do that today, but I really don't feel I want to right now, but going yes. into some ways, the techniques to work with, and how you need to, to go about doing that. Uh, like I said, you uh, stay in well, touch with the, yeah. if you can, and it's, it's beneficial if you try and start working on that right away. Right. That yes. can only help you open up the spirit uh, and understand it greatly. Like yes. I said, these people that talk about uh, being spiritual out there doing mainstream, and I, I I challenge a lot of people. I sent letters to Barbara Max Hubbard and you name it. Every, I mean, uh, they all talk about Ed Casey and Zachariah Sitchin as like they're gods. Uh, but in reality, there's only one God, and that's within you that you can relate to and learn to understand. And that's what people need to do. They can't look for it outside of themselves. And they're not going to find it in another world or another universe or another galaxy, whatever words you want to use. And until a person really decides to look at themselves. I mean, even a simple technique like looking in a mirror and just staring at yourself for, for 10 minutes and just lock out all thoughts and just look into your eyes. You'll have an experience because you're looking at something and then you're looking beyond that, that body you're staring at. What's inside? What's really inside? What's making you think? What's, what, what is all that stuff? So we have to be aware of what most New Age people don't want to look at. All right? The reality of what's happening to the planet, what mankind has been doing to children and women for forever, and how are we really going to change that? Waiting for a wave of energy to change you is like saying, I'm waiting for God to come down and tell me what to do. I mean, God gave you freedom and a, and a planet to play with. And we, we, we're playing with it, but we're not doing anything beneficial here. So... And it's sad to hear how all these New Age people claim, and I use the word New Age, it's religionists do. Uh, here, let me just say this. Religion and, and, and spirituality and New Age are all one. And really not separating. Just that each one of them looks at the other part of that as a, as a part that's wrong. Like New Age look at the Bible and religious people as wrong. Religion for five years. No matter what diet they go on, no matter what they believe, you know, whatever they do, they're going to die when they're 125. Moses only lived that long. So when we talk about, I mean, there's a few people on this planet that are 120, 119, uh, but they're ready to go. Uh, they're on that boat. I don't know he's ready to leave. But I'm surprised that anybody would want to stay here that long. 
if you decide to live to 125, you would see a lot of your children die, your family die. If that's something that makes you feel good, fine. Uh, I'm not at a place to, to, to enjoy things like that or get satisfaction out of seeing it. I mean, you want to see your children grow old, but you don't want to see them die. So when we talk about this new age food and everything else to live longer, look, here's something that, that I learned. Your body is the effect of your spiritual truth. I mean, why is the 90% of the, not 90, I wouldn't say a percentage, why is a large percent of the planet so overweight? Because their mind has lost reality. They're, they it can't control what's going on in their body no more, and food is, is really destroying it. Not saying that the government's responsible by putting chemicals and everything and everything you eat, which is part of it. But then again, when we were little, and here's something that people don't relate to. They're saying sugar's the most dangerous. I learned that it is for your teeth, but not for your body. All right? The synthetic sugars they're putting in everything is 10,000 times more dangerous to the human body. Quick thought. Go back to when you were a child, if you were old enough to go back that old. When you were a little kid, and you drank Coca-Cola, and you had a hamburger, and you had French fries, and then the next day you had pizza, which is Coca-Cola or Pepsi, whatever. Children, when I was a little kid, there was only one heavy person in my whole school. One. And everybody knew it. I mean, we, we, we don't look at that. Why is that? Why were they healthy? When we were little, we didn't have a lot of sicknesses. We got the ones that were brought to us, like the mumps and the chicken pox. But we didn't have these sicknesses that all children are getting. And it's going to escalate by next year and year after by, by the sounds and, and the ways that they're putting out the heart system, cell phones and everything else. But people don't look at things in reality. Again, I'm a realist. These are the things that I know that were fact when I was little. All my friends were never sick. I mean, if you want to get out of school, you said, oh, I have a stomach ache. But how many people really had serious problems? Uh, I did, but that's besides the point. I challenged God and got rid of it. But we have to realize the ideas that were programmed into our consciousness. Uh, I had a lot of uh, sexual abuse when I was young and, and so many different levels. Was it accepted? No, but it wasn't also brought out to the public either. I mean, the priests were doing their things in church with little kids, and all those things were going on around us all the time, and nobody would do anything. And even now, the Pope's freeing and trying to keep these uh, a lot of these other popes and people out of jail and, and going to jail and prison and stuff because of uh, their sexual things that they do. Uh, we justify it, and that's, again... Morals is directly what spiritual means uh, in the physical world. Without morals, we do not move forward spiritually. And if you believe that, I'll go into why I said what spirituality and the, the way that's coming, that's not really happening. These people are dealing with, and here's a double, uh, I, I can't think of the right word, but it actually goes against itself. When a new age person says they're channeling Gabriel or Michael. And they got this message for the world. Listen to the message. There's, very, there's never a message brought out, ever. All that says, we're here to help you. Blah. Everything's going to be okay. Now, that's depending on who you are and where you live. But they channel Gabriel and Michael, and they are angels out of the Bible. Now, if you ask them if they believe in the Bible, they'll say no. I'll say, how can you work with an angel that's out of the Bible that you don't believe in the Bible? Because he's telling you things you want to hear now, or that angel's telling you what you want to hear. That's called ego. And I'll challenge any psychic on this planet, in general, I mean, there's a few, very few. And I will challenge them in a, in a debate or work with them at a, at a psychic level uh, to say, okay, prove it. Prove that you're dealing with an angel. And why would this angel come for you to tell us what? Give us something that the world would want to hear that would need to hear it. I mean, God loves us, or we're all one. Does that help the world at all, at any level? The spiritual wave, oh, well, this wave's going to hit the planet, and everybody's going to raise hot, higher consciousness. To what? If you don't believe in God, you can't raise yourself to anything. Maybe to another higher ladder or a taller building, like the uh, Tower of Babel. Uh, he thought he could build a tower to get into God. I mean, we, we're in this place. And you talk about where we're going and what's going to happen. 
you're dealing with Gabriel or Michael, I, I can say a lot of names. I know them all, what they preach, what they say, what they say to channel. I mean, it all started with J.J. Knight uh, of Canal, who's really big out there in, Maine, in Bashar. Uh, they talk about these beings they work with and stuff. If you want to believe in a being, that's fine. If you want to believe in a, uh, some weird creature, that's fine. But when you turn around and say, what's well, spiritual and it's this, that, and the other thing, you're cutting off the fact that morals exist. You think you can do anything you want you're living outside of morals. Again, the Ten Commandments, no matter how they got to this planet, whoever wrote them, whoever brought them down here, wherever they came from, it was just a system to keep the earth in a, in a structured, balanced way. Not to make it worse, not to hurt people. And it doesn't. I mean, the Hasidic Jewish people have 600 laws, and they're all twisted, but uh, I won't get into that because they can't even live by ten. If we could live by the Ten Commandments, all right, the world would be incredible. Mm. And even the statement, honor thy father and mother, would be good if you put the real part mm. two to it. means that father and mother have to honor thy child. And then you've got a perfect relationship in the family. Without that, you've got zero. When people saw the Ten Commandments were outdated, outdated to mm. what? To your new belief in the new God you created? I mean, that's why God said, have no other God before you, because we create them, and we accept whatever we want to be from that God that we created. And, I, and, and something really funny for people, pull up on how to create a religion. And it's really cool, because you read that, and it's real. If you want to create a religion, you've got to create an incredible God with incredible powers that nobody can ever recognize or, or get in touch with, and then they can't disprove you. Uh, just for instance, J.J. Knight went to court a, year, a while ago. She won in court that she channels Ramtha, who is her spiritual being, or guy, whatever. Somebody else used the name, and they were, and she went to court over it, and he lost. Because in court they justified, well, she, she claimed that. You can't cl- hello? You can't claim spirit. Uh... Uh, sorry, I, I got another quote, but I'm not going to take it. I, I, was, I was just trying to get rid of it. You kind of got distracted a little bit there, Tommy? Well, no, it's beeping in my ear. I'm on my phone, uh, and it comes calling in. It's from the other radio show, but, uh... Are you supposed sorry, to do another not... show after you leave this one? Oh, no, no, no. It was maybe tonight, but I won't, because... I'm okay. a rebel, and, and that's why I'm saying I'm a realist. I don't go by by everybody else's laws or rules. I go by my truth when I can prove it's true and real. If I know there's a God, I have to believe it and live that life of that aspect. I think it's a moral. I, be- I may believe that there's a God. No, there is a God. Okay. But what I'm saying is this group, I mean, they have a radio show, which is on tonight again. It was on last night. They have an incredible speaker going into these great stories. But none of them are provable. Uh, and they're so outrageous. Uh, do we want to accept it? And why would we want to accept it? Well, let me ask you this. Are they presenting this as opinion or as fact? Well, no, this person's going on fact. He was working with a couple different races. Uh, he was working for the government, the whole thing. Uh, he got into detail, great detail about everything. And he's going to be doing it tonight. Uh, I was on a little bit with them. And then uh, I got cut off because they, they wanted to ask more questions about certain things. I'm a rebel because... No matter who's speaking about things like that, the ten people with the similar experiences, they're all different. And the whole Roswell thing is confronted by, like, hundreds of people saying they have different stories of that and what's true and what's not. The fact is, we did shoot a ship down. We shot three down. All right, who was involved with that? Who was really involved? I don't know, but a, a good friend of mine who's going to come out with some really important information, and I'm trying to do a conference with him uh, and a few other people, bringing out actual artifacts and proof that aliens do exist and everything else. But uh, the fact that these people say these things with no proof and want us to believe it, which is fine, if you believe every 10 out of every 100 people actually work with the government, was working with the Greys, was driving their ships, and... There wasn't that many ships for all these different people to be involved and not know each other. Uh, Basagio, who's a time traveler with somebody else, I mean, uh, Warner, uh, Weber, 
Uh, they got this great story going on together now. I mean, these stories of time travel and, and being here and going, it's all great. The whole month off project, I was really close to Al Bill at Pressing Nichols. Uh, when that was going on, I got involved with it myself. So I know the real parts that I proved to myself that were real, like the vortex. And they didn't deal much with that. They talked about the chair and all those kind of things, but they, they didn't really get into the actual situation of where it goes and how it gets out of here and all those things. So yeah, I'm a rebel. I proved so many things that most people would not want to prove. I was two feet from a Bigfoot. So can I say they're not real? No, I cannot. I was ten feet from an alien. Could I say it was real or not? Yes, I can. I saw so many ships from a hundred feet or less or and less further, but some of them really close. Can I deny that? No. Were they government ships? No, they were not. All right. Here's something. I, I don't want, I'll just throw this in real fast. If you're trying to prove something, a UFO or a government ship, the simplest thing I would suggest, how fast is it really moving? If you can see it, it's probably a government ship. Most UFOs do not travel slow. They do not. And if they do move, they move from one place to out of their solar system within a few seconds. Not, not, not even, not minutes or, or hours or whatever. So when people say I've seen the UFO, a lot of the things they are seeing now are government ships that they, they created from UFOs they did shoot down. So with that, I mean, that's just one part of it that all these new age people are saying, uh, and trying to relate that these are all motherships and they come in here to help us. Funny. Uh, Tibet's being destroyed, uh, the countries are being destroyed. So when do these people actually step in to get involved? Uh, or when we ask them to, how many people have to ask them to get involved? It's, it's sad the way mankind has been programmed their thinking and their consciousness to accept ideas that don't relate to a spiritual reality or even to the morals that we should be living by. Uh, so I, I, I'm sorry I went off a little, but I just think I'd throw all that in. Getting back to uh, personal spiritual exercises, yes, we all need to work more, do one every day, uh, and we need to learn what soul is. It's the first step in growth. Understanding what you truly are can take you from the first step to many steps down the road. So when you have your first experience, at that point, you will understand what soul truly is. It won't be an idea no more and or a belief. A belief in this, a Bible, a book, or anything, a teaching, is a belief until you prove it to yourself and then it becomes a reality. And that's where I base my word on realist, because I based it on actual reality that I experienced, not the books and stories that I heard. And most people that talk mainstream have one experience in their life. I had four death experiences in mine. I spent 25 years traveling out of my body. So when somebody writes a book on a near-death experience, it's suddenly they know everything. You know, one experience. I have them all the time. I've been pouring out of that because I've been dealing with the physical world trying to get the truth out now. I've spent 25 years in different realms and levels with different kinds of beings and places. Like, every single one of them is a billion times better than planet Earth. So why am I still here? Because I have to finish out my, my, my little bit of karma that i got to deal with right now. But I can leave that every time, any time I want, because I kind of came to the end of it. Uh, I'm actually working in Earth's calmers, the calmer of the planet itself, to stay here right now. Uh, but what I'm saying is, I'm ready to leave. And all souls need to be that. Uh, here's something out of the Bible, which is, most people don't understand what he said when he said it. Those who hold on to life will lose it, and he who gives it up will have eternal life. All right? And what he meant, we're dead. This is the walking dead on this planet. This is hell. I don't mean, know, people don't like to hear that word or say that. This is where we're in the lowest we can be. So why do we want to make it spiritual? We can't. This is created for a reason. Without planet Earth, if you go to the astral plane, you can stay there for thousands and thousands of more years. Or hundreds of thousands of years, if that's what you want. Without ever thinking about moving further than that. So yeah, this planet is the best place to learn to become spiritual. You're not dealing with crystal cities and, and, and all these beautiful things and the lights of light bodies and stuff like that. No, we're, we're hardcore. We're looking at people that can bloody and hurt and beat up and all these horrible things. So is that heaven? 
if you want to perceive heaven has that on it, stay here. And that's what Jesus meant. As long as we're dead, we'll stay here until we're willing to let go of the physical body, which is the only way you can go through ascension. And that word has been so abused over the past uh, 10 years to a place where, like, everybody can go uh, and, and everybody's going to go into ascension and, and do that. There's a few beings that did it. Jesus was one of them. Uh, Buddha, Buddha, Buddha actually went, and he was talking about the blue state, uh, a different place uh, in the inner world, uh, in the lower realms of God. Uh, but basically, there are different aspects, and they do not teach the same thing. And if you go back to the Hindu religions, and they were doing with these deities, they weren't teaching much of that at all. Uh, if you know much about the gods then, it was all about sex. And how spiritual is that? Not very. But then again, if you call, turn around and call that being your God, obviously you can't go much further than God. If you believe that's a God, you don't go further than it. And I learned that when you start traveling, there's multiple worlds or dimensions or realms, whatever word you like. The astral plane is a very similar to planet Earth, except you don't eat if you don't want. You can fly around if you want. It's, it still sounds a lot better, and it probably is in certain ways. But as far as trying to move on, there's not much there to give you that spunk to move into a higher realm. And you're not seeing it because you're dealing with souls that are stuck there or whatever. When you go past the mental plane, the mind, when you drop mind and you let go of the ego and stuff, and you travel into the, the higher realms, the, the higher realms are the lower realms, which means before soul actually separates from itself, uh, you're in these worlds where you see these beings in these crystal cities and, and everything's incredible. Uh, but you don't get to that world without going past a God, a little God. Every realm has a little God. And those gods keep souls from going from one world into the other. Like saying, take the worst alien and put him into the higher worlds of God. He would destroy it. So it can't happen, and it's not allowed to happen. So yeah, there's a hierarchy, there's rules, and people hate the word rules. And as long as they hate the word rules, they also hate the word truth. So if they, they dis disrespect both of those words, they're going to live on planet Earth. In the illusion, they're in the ultimate bliss, heaven, heaven here and now. All right, it's wishful thinking. As far as the physical body, it's not in heaven. The body does so many disgusting things. How can you say that's a spiritual body? It isn't. So we've been programmed at so many levels in this New Age movement, the uh, spiritual movement that's happening, it's stripping us of an awareness of a God and filling it with the illusion of aliens and uh, ego, the ego being that we are God. And I said, show me one person, any person on this planet that could raise a car and make it, throw it up into space. Really? And they can't do it with a car. Never mind do it with universes and stuff. So how can one person claim to be God? Well, I can heal people. What are you healing people of? Let, I, I guess I'll get into that. I, I don't know how much we talked about it the last time. Mm, we did a little bit, but not a heck of a whole lot. Well, I, I've been dealing with a lot of the psychic healers and, and psychics in over 25 years. I mean, I've I dealt with a really incredible woman when I was young. The <coughs> biggest thing that she said and did is real. But uh, most of the ones that are coming here now, I can tell you what's happening. When a person is sick and, and they feel like they're not getting much help from their doctor or their medicine, they might think about going to a psychic or a channel or, or a medium, whatever words you want. At that point, they're, they're really giving up hope on themselves and they're looking for outside help. Now we have Joe Schmo out there saying, I can heal anybody, just give me $300. Uh, well, $300, I'll go pay him and I'll get healed. They're believing in something that's not real in, in reality. So what happens is when they meet this person and they talk about uh, getting a healing, and this person does his thing or whatever, and they go, oh, I feel good. What is happening during that moment? That person is giving up all his energy, and he's allowing the other person to use it. And the other person's just giving it back to them. All right. When that happens, it's a temporary healing. It'll last for a while, a year, two years, five years, 
but it doesn't clear the problem for the sickness. All sickness in this world is from karma. Karma we create, karma we created in this lifetime, or karma we created in many other lifetimes. All right. So when you're healing, you've got to heal that. All right. Which is the first thing that we need to work on, cleaning our karma so we can actually leave and not, and, and not have to come back. All right. When you get sick, your body's paying karma. So if you think somebody can just, you pay somebody else to take it away, that's still like saying, I'm going to pay my way into heaven. No rich person can do that. And Jesus, personally, believing in him or not, did say many times, it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich person is to go into heaven. And it still stands true to today. Because if you think you can buy your way into heaven, or pay somebody to get you into heaven, and pay somebody to heal you, it's still in the, del- the delusion of this world and programmed ideas. A healer has no real power over somebody else unless it's given to them. Otherwise, they would be an entity or a demon. If you feel you can change the world and make everybody else believe what you want, that's called witchcraft, voodoo. It's called power, control. Spiritual growth happens from each soul attaining what they want to attain. And that's what free will is all about. Staying on planet Earth is a free will if you decide to think that this is so important. As long as you place your attention on a, a rock, a stone, a tree, that's what you're going to focus on. If you focus on God itself, always you go to the highest level. Always. If you follow beings and creatures, yeah, you're going to learn something. It might not be beneficial really for you or, or your level of awareness, but they will make you believe that. So yeah, I'm a rebel about all alien races coming here and making a spiritual. Now, if you're aware, they found just last week the biggest object in the universe, and they said it can't exist, uh, it's impossible to exist, that Einstein's theory was proven wrong again, but uh, they're not going to be talking about it too much because they don't want to get into that aspect yet. Everything that we know was just disproven by that, including the Big Bang Theory and the black hole and all those kind of things. So uh, where are we going? We create our reality by egos in this reality what we want to accept and what mankind is forced to accept. Again, we have free will. We can search for spiritual truth. And you're not going to find it when you pay $100 or $2,000 to go to a workshop. They will make you feel good. Feeling good is called the bliss state, especially when you step out of the body and step into it. Buddha taught that. That's what his whole teaching was about. And that's the starting point when you step into the bliss state because you let go of the mind. All right, but you can stay in that space forever without awareness and you step into bliss. You're not aware that you're in bliss, you just enjoy it. You can stay there if that's what you want to do. I consider myself a spiritual traveler. I will go as far in, 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 as far as I can go. Even if God allows me to go further and further, which it does, you keep going there. So it's totally different than say, well, I'm going to attain and go to some particular place. There is no particular place especially in the inner worlds, all right? As far as the physical world, this planet Earth, that's as far as you can go. Get on a ship, get off of it for a little while, but you still got to come back. So we talk about ideas and programming. Spirit is free, the body is not. So how can spirit be free in a physical body? It cannot. Simple. And if you just look at that with a normal brain, normal thinking, and realize I'm in a box, solid steel box, buried under the ground, concrete over it, where can I go? Nowhere. In the same planet Earth. You cannot travel with that body. It's it's even to travel through from here to another planet, it has to be put in a special kind of suit to get from here and there. Which I don't want to get into. But as far as when we talk about spiritual awareness and becoming that, are you willing to step out of the box that you live in? Are you willing to let go of all the programmed ideas? If you doubt things, fine. Whatever you want to believe in, you need to prove it. Prove that you go somewhere when you die is the first thing. And, and that should be the last thing you should worry about because as you're getting closer to death, that's going to be one thing that you really want to, want to prove to yourself. Because if it's five minutes before you're dying and you, you have a belief system, so I'm going to go to heaven, it's not going to do you very much good while your body's shaking and shutting down. All right? If you're totally aware, you can just step out of it and be with your spirit guides, angels, and all that other stuff. 
So yeah, that's something you need to learn. And I suggest uh, everybody should step through that phase uh, to get there to prove it to themselves. Again, I my email address is hawksblood1 aol.com h a w k s number one aol.com. I will reply. I do talk to people. I'd rather talk to people on the phone than emailing because I feel there's much more connection. And I do have a trouble. I have dyslexia and a lot of problems with writing and spelling, and it's just so much harder for me. So uh, please, if you want to ask a question personally and work with it, I am always willing. I don't charge money. I'm not here to make money. I do give my first two books away to anybody that wants to read them. I just finished my third book. I have it on some kind of uh, e-book. I don't know how to send it out yet. Uh, as soon as I figure that out, I, I will send it out free too. I'm not writing to make money at any level. I feel that the truth is, is not, you can't buy truth the same as you can't buy spiritualism. So my life is dedicated to the truth while I'm here to bring it out the best I can and to give it to people and to put the truth over on top of all the lies that are out there. You don't you have uh, a... I'm sorry. I was going to say, don't you have a copy on sale at Amazon in addition to the one you give away so that people can choose? Oh, no, no. People can buy any of my books. Uh, they're all online. Uh, when Truth is Called Crazy, Truth Beyond the Illusion are both online. You can buy those books. Uh, but I do send an e-book to people that, that want to read them that I know. Oh, okay. Free, is what I'm saying. Uh, like I said, I'm not doing it to make money. Uh, and I don't care if a million people buy the book. I mean, it would be great. But I just want people that are ready to hear what I have to say, find it. Because if a person is ready to become spiritual other than programmed, they need a few simple techniques to work with. And that's not like uh, waiting for a wave to come make you spiritual. Disabled or not, it's not a problem because, I mean, there's so many living say if you're disabled, you can't become spiritual, which is a really big lie. It's like saying if you have a physical body, you can't become spiritual. Kind of true. So until you are willing to accept that and work from that level, you can attain it. You can attain it in your lifetime. You can attain an, an incredible experience in within 30 days. And I tell people, if you're willing to commit 30 days of nonstop commitment every single day, you will have an experience. It's that simple. Once spirit knows that you're really ready and committed to attaining something, it's willing and, and definitely there to help you. Uh, like I said, I'll go into those techniques uh, at a different time. I, I want to get through the, uh, the facts that why we're, we just came out of this great big storytelling story of what was supposed to happen to the planet, what's going, what is happening to the planet. The Earth is going through a lot. The sun's getting pretty bad. The earthquakes are being coming violent. Uh, the weather is extremely violent, which people will see now, even they say that, that nothing really happened since 2012-21. But it'll last for two years, and there's so many things that could possibly happen. This month is going to be a meteorite going past us in between our satellites and planet Earth. I'm not sure what day it is. How much it will do, we don't know. Uh, the whole new bearer thing and planet X, there was an object around the sun, and there was things happening, but it didn't affect us. Uh, whether it helped us or not, it's a different story. And remember this, if an alien steps in, it's not to save the human race in general. It's to save the planet. Because planet Earth is, I would say, a food source, energy source for a lot of different races. Uh, DNA source, whatever you want to call it. We have a lot of uh, resources here that aliens use. And that's why they would save the planet. You think they care? And they say, well, they're going to help us soon. And here's a story that I'll relate to, which should make it real simple to understand. Again, real simple. Okay. There's a hundred people starving around the corner from your house. And there's a thousand people starving down the road. You got a food for a hundred people. Who do you feed? A thousand people or a hundred people? It's a choice. Well, these people are close, I'll feed them. I mean, it's still a limited choice because those people are starving. Why aren't you feeding them all? So when an alien says, oh, we'll come here and help you, who are they going to help? Which people do you think they want to help? I mean, 7 billion people, they know they can't help 7 billion people. No race can. And for us to believe that is another illusion. But again, if they do help people, which people do you think they're going to help? And then you have to see, do I fit into those people? So being a spiritual person, claiming you can heal one person, 
because they came to you or they offered you money. What about those children starving that don't even know how to ask for help? Why aren't you helping them first? Mankind has twisted their thinking, their their abilities, uh, and, and they, they accept the horrible reality as, like, we're all spiritual. I wish. I wish that more than anything. I mean, the more I get closer to my end of my life and see things happening, I can see the things that people don't look at, override, cover up, and lie about. Why it makes me feel good in the moment. I always thought, what happens when I die? A Buddhist belief by a high lama was always thinking about dying every second. Because any next second that happens, you could die. Are you ready for it? Are you where you need to be to go through that? If not, why not? So I challenge people. Are you ready? Are you ready to face dying? Oh, I'm, I'm healthy. If a plane falls on your house, you could be dead tomorrow. Anything could happen. You know, there's a 120 car accident. I mean, anything's possible. Even though we say, well, a meteorite crashing into your house. Now, a friend of mine on the other island, Maui, woke up a couple nights ago with a car next to her bed. She was hit, the car went right through the house, right through the wall, right into her bed. I mean, she, she got hurt a little bit, but she was okay. So anything's possible to say, well, I'm untouchable, I'm on a healthy diet. It all doesn't matter. Where you are spiritually is the only thing that matters. And if you think you can charge people lots of money to tell them how to become spiritual, you will stand before your God, whatever that could be, when you die. Maybe not before, but when you do, you will face that karma. All the people you lead to some other path or some other belief and other delusion is your karma. The same as if you save somebody and they're a mass murderer. It's still your karma. So we have to be real. That's why I say I'm a realist. When you say you're becoming spiritual, are you living it? What are you doing for yourself that makes it real? What are you doing for the world that makes it real? What are you doing for God that makes it true? All right. And you have to piece those things together. And I challenge you. And I, I'm open for debate. And I told you that if we ever can get some debate from some people that really are willing. The problem is, which I went into a big, I did my own show on it too, why like people cannot deal with truth. They do anything to hide from it. All New Age people, if you put the truth in front of them, they fold and collapse. What I was trying to get to, the Emerald Tablets, I studied them. I did the technique that you work with, and it teaches you to go through some kind of form of uh, spiritual unfoldment. Uh, the teachings in that say, in the end, the truth will always destroy all the lies. So I'm a rebel. I'm putting the truth out there. People say, oh, it's your truth. It's not real truth. It's my truth. It's different. If you don't have truth, you don't have truth. You can have ideas and beliefs, but truth means spiritual law and spiritual laws are real. If you know what they are, you have to live by them. And the first important spiritual law is the law of non-interference, which very few people on this planet have a clue to what it means to how to live a life from that point. Uh, so, yeah, that's a, a critical thing to think about and understand because as we move into this, quote, spiritual age, uh, and we're all going to shift into higher awareness, what are you going to become aware of? That you're not spiritual? And, that, and I, again, I bring that up because uh, I do want to get into spiritual abuse. I, we've got about a half hour, right? Uh, pretty close to that, a little less. <clears throat> well, I, I'd rather just keep it for like... Uh, since where we are right now, uh, as far as how we're going to take a step out of this. The first thing is, you need to find a spiritual technique, or, uh, I, I, they call it meditation. Meditation is like just becoming one with nothingness and, and staying in that void. You need to move from that state into a greater state. Because if you stay in that state, which is the bliss state, without mind, you're just being and doing nothing. If you want to move forward, you need to take the step beyond that. So you have to step out of the bliss state and go into the world of creation. Uh, and then you start becoming a creator. But it's only given to you when you can take a few steps from each level where you're at from right now. So the plane is not where you become that. 
the mental plane, mind plane, uh, fourth, fifth world is where when you start moving into it. So when we take this step and we become aware of who we are and you have your first out-of-body experience, you will know about death and it will no longer be a thing. Uh, like, well, I got to think about it. No, it's just, okay, I know what's happening. All right. So that takes a lot of burden off of what people are so afraid of in life. Because like I said, they want to live longer. They want to stay here. They're afraid to face their maker. They're afraid to face the world that they can move into, even though they say they're working with these angels. Now, something that I just heard, somebody was on Coast to Coast a few weeks ago. One of the top uh, spirit uh, communicators who actually deals with spirits and talks to people, spirits for people and all that. Most, most probably the biggest name out there. He was talking about how all souls are not evil. Uh, he also doesn't believe in possession, deep, um, deep possession. Uh, so he's dealing with spirits, and they all have good things to say. So that sounds like it's a one-sided thing to me, which I know is a lie. But again, he's dealing with energy on this planet. When a soul dies, it leaves energy. And people around that carry that energy. So when he's left with a person and they're reading the person, oh, oh, they're here, I see him. And, uh, two things. Yes, he can feel energy and stuff, but then again, he's also tracing history and facts and, and other things about that person physically. Uh, getting back to the point where possession is a real thing in this world, whether it's by aliens or, or demons, it's a real thing. And it can manifest at so many different levels. It's not like you have to turn into a two two persons and speak in this horrible language and go around and or just. It's not like that. Again, when you watch The Exorcist, it's an abstract version of what really happened. Now, when you're going through that, well, if you're getting possessed, things changing your life simply. Like you don't eat certain foods, and you hate certain people, and things just start changing. And it starts becoming a reality. You start pulling back from spiritual things and you move more into uh, dramatic things. I'd say if a person loves to go see movies like uh, Halloween and uh, the new one that just came out, there's something wrong. Because if you're still drawn to the darkness, you didn't face it. And that is something that every soul needs to do before they die if they want to step out of the astral plane and start moving forward as a spiritual being. But as long as we allow these movies to be shown on TV and in the theaters, it, it affects people. People want, and I did a whole show on this, uh, I'll give that out near the end, uh, how people watch things. And you think it doesn't affect them? Well, let me explain why. Child abuse, spiritual abuse. All right, I'm going to put them together. As a child, when you're, when you're born, from about the time you're three or four, you're so open, so in tune with spirit. So when children stop playing with spirits and talking to them, uh, adults don't understand it anymore. So they always say it's a make-believe friend and blah, blah, blah. It's not real. I mean, it happened to me when I was one. My mother told me that when I was 11. But they're so open to that. But the problem, they're able to be attacked or, or, or sucked into a demon or an entity, and they start programming their thinking. I, I, I get into that a little bit. But when that starts happening, if the adults aren't aware, the child grows into that and then slowly becomes that. So when people say, well, how's a guy going to kill people? Does anybody have a clue what goes on in everybody's individual life? No. Do they really care? No. Do they want to make a, a real reason for it to happen? And yes. Well, that's because he watched this one movie, or he, he ate this candy, or they want to specifically give it to one little thing. All right. Uh, I'll go into this real shortly. I had so many kinds of weird sexual abuses when I was young. All right. When I went to my parents, they, they don't do nothing. They didn't do nothing in those days. They didn't care. I said, well, be careful. And they talk to a person and say, don't do that, or that's not right. But they don't give respect to children. Again, the Ten Commandments is like one of them. It says, honor thy mother and father. But the other part of that is parents have to honor thy children. All right, when a child's being in that really 
transformative area of time is the most critical time for parents to be aware of what energy they allow into their house or what energy is in their house, what they bring into their house, because it will affect the child because that child's open to it. So that to, to blame it on anything else at that time is so ridiculous. But by the time the child is actually reaching seven and eight, they start playing games, and the games are reconditioning and allowing and open that negative side even more. And then by the time they're 14, they're going to watch these horrible movies, and it opens it even more. So they're slightly possessed. Like I said, repossession comes at so many different levels. You're not going to walk around as a zombie, or you're not going to walk around as a, a, a person with an axe, which comes to reality in the very end. I'm talking about when you become in that state. So, I mean, for, for weeks, why did this guy go out and kill all these children? Why? Why? What made him? Do you think you're going to get the answer from a dead body, a child that's no longer here, that can't even tell his story? I mean, we want truth. And then if somebody starts talking, well, they got abducted, they're crazy. They don't want to hear the truth. And that's why I always use the word truth. And they say, oh, it's your truth. No, truth. Truth. The things that are real. Why? Why we don't want to look at it. Why we don't want to know what really caused something to happen. We want to make everything be else, somebody else's problem, somebody else's fault. The fault is when two people, male, female, become together to have a relationship and have a child, they plan on it, or they should. Now, are these two people spiritual? If not, they're not forming a real relationship. And that we could cut that off and let go of that. But if they're really compassionate, loving people, and they want to create a spiritual relationship, which is where a relationship becomes a reality uh, and true, they have to be willing to work together and understand life and spiritual laws. At the same time, they have to learn about spirit. They have to learn what it is. Because most people, just because they get married and they say they love each other, have no clue about spirit or, or the truth about spiritual laws and things like that. So now they have a child. Are they aware of the energy that's in that house. When they go to a bar and they come home, when they go to a club and come home, do they know what energy they're bringing into that house that their child absorbs? I mean, very simple things, and that's why I call it spiritual abuse. You can say whatever you want but until you're willing to face the truth and what your responsibility to that is. Are you very close to being spiritual? Again, back to the parents. They have a child three years old. They go out to a club, party, and come home feed the baby and, and start having sex or whatever. Where is the spiritual awareness that this child's going to get? It can feel everything. So, again, as they start getting older, the idea of spiritual truth they don't really get. And going to church is not the solution. One day a week, standing before somebody that says something is not how you become spiritual. All right. So now this child's moving on, growing, and then he gets sexual abuse. And beside that, and I pulled up the statistics just yesterday, and they're the most obscene thing I could ever imagine for what, quote, people call a spiritual world. Sexual abuse, child abuse. Uh, every one minute somebody's being raped. Is that a number of a, a, a good number for a spiritual world? One out of every five women by the time they're 40 will be raped. Is that a good number? Is that a spiritual name or number? People don't want to hear truth. And that's facts of what's happening. Oh, it's not going to happen to me. You can say whatever you want. As long as you don't get raped or your child is being abused, it's not happening to you. But when it does, and you don't even know it. And most of the people I met in my lifetime came out of sexual abuse. Never mind parents that were aware of it, but didn't do anything about it. Do you call that spiritual? They were going to church or they were doing their things. Spiritual is me living the reality of respect for something. If you respect nothing, how can you respect yourself? If you don't respect a God, how can you respect what your mind believes? You can't. So people say they are God. They automatically erase all rules and regulations and put up a sign, I can do whatever I want, which is being accepted. And as long as more people accept it, it becomes the law. And again, morals get erased. All the spiritual morals that came, I mean, all the morals that came out of the Ten Commandments or that the Ten Commandments related to are no longer in existence. All right. So now we have people saying to God that don't respect the God and do whatever they want. Do you 
feel we can move forward spiritually from that level, we cannot. If you go into delusion and say, well, this wave is going to make us all that, make you all what? Respect a God, respect yourself. How can you respect yourself if you don't know who you are? If you don't know yourself as soul, you have no clue to who you really are. So I, I know I'm putting stuff together, but it's not that complicated. Uh, I'm a realist. It's simple. And without truth in, 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 in and unaware of spirituality, which you have to experience, you have no truth. So, and that's why most people say it's your truth, because they have theirs. You can't have your own. God had its own awareness and truth that it gave to all worlds. And we all have to live by them. God said you have to eat if you want to live in a physical body. I mean, all those little things that we say, well, well we have our free will. Don't eat. See how long you can make yourself live. Uh, I mean, the, the, the Aryans that live on air and water for a while are skinny, spiritual people. I mean, they're, but they're not healthy. Uh, and if they do meditation and prayer for hours during the day to keep their body alive. Uh, but in general, what we do, what we eat, how we are, are slight reflections. And food doesn't make a person unless you ab- abuse it and become super heavy and things like that. And there's always a reason behind most eating. Uh, not that they're going to put chemicals in, but there's always things going on in children. When children get heavy, there's problems. All right? And that's spiritual protection. Again, what I tried to get into. Parents, when they have a relationship and have a child, they've got to be aware of energy in the house, how to clean it, how to keep the house healthy. Uh, and then, if a child does get possessed or things don't happen, do they know how to work with it other than saying the child's crazy? And then sending them to a doctor and putting them on medicine, which pulls them back into the more easy for something to work inside their consciousness when the mind's not aware and the spirit can't deal with it. Because uh, spirit steps out of the body when it's crazy, or when the mind can't function. Like if you, if, simple thing. When you were little, you spun around, put your arms out, and spun around in circles until you fell down. Usually you got nauseous, but you always did it. And the fact is, there's an incredible fact relying uh, where the whirling dervishes came from behind that. As the body starts going in circles, it starts getting dizzy, and as the mind gets dizzy, it loses its awareness. At that point. Spirit says, I can't do anything with this body. I'm stepping out of it. So the spirit steps out of the body. Your soul will step out of it for a few seconds until you fall on the ground. So that experience alone is what gives children the pleasure of doing it. All right. The well and dervishes learn the technique to do that for hours. Because while they're spinning their body, they can leave it. All right. It's an incredible technique if you learn. Uh, you don't have to be in a religion. You don't have to follow any specific path. I mean, that's for people that are really gifted to that. It takes a lot of different things to do that. Uh, and I don't suggest that for a lot of people. But it is one way. So getting back to these children. And the parents don't know how to determine anything going on within that child. And if something bad happens, they say, well, he, he's, he's crazy or whatever, he's sick. Uh, sickness is a word given to most un, uh, rebels in society. If you think different than most people, you're considered crazy, which I have always been called. All right. If you think like everybody else, you're normal. If you don't, you're crazy. But the fine line between being what I would call truly crazy and crazy is, is so different. Because in the human race, if a million people accept something, it's no longer crazy. If a million people, let's say 10 billion people, sorry, 10 million people accept gay as a normal thing, it's normal. But there's those people that say it's not normal. So they're considered outcasts now, even though that was the original morals and, and situation. So as long as we accept things by a group consciousness, no matter what it is, you're no longer crazy. But if the majority doesn't accept it, you are crazy, just like they did with the witches in Salem and from every every aspect of those kind of things. You did things, they didn't understand it, you were crazy. So you believe in something that's not real, you're crazy because they can't prove it to themselves. So I ask anybody that tries to prove somebody else crazy, prove that God doesn't exist first and then you can move forward. All right? If that's what you want to believe in, if that's what your true belief system is. But as long as we're in in this real world where we have to go out there and meet other people and deal with them, 
Are we really caring about what we're eating? Are we caring about what our children are going through? Because children in the situation when they're not being protected grow into these people that have no awareness of spirit, of God, of right and wrong. The morals are gone. So what do they have? Free will. Free to do whatever they want. So when somebody goes into a mall and shoots a bunch of people, that's called free will. And now we're going to try to figure out why he had free will. Because we allow him to carry a gun. We allow him to to justify all the, the rules that contradict why he's a free person. So to say, bring him back to the world consciousness of becoming spiritual, uh, you can't use the word free will. You can't have seven billion people in a place of free will to do whatever they want. Because one out of ten people, guys, would want to have sex with every woman on the planet. All right, is that free will? It's his free will. Is it all the women's free will? No. Uh, people that rape people think it's their right. I mean, are we going to justify and say, well, that's their free will? No. So how do we take away certain morals? Because we're losing awareness of the things that held us close to it. And God said, don't worship idols. I mean, if you worship idols, you forget about what you're really praying to. Uh, they can be translated in simple reality, simple normal terms to relate to what's really being said. Uh, they talk stupid in those days, don't ask me why. Uh, when they write anyway. So getting back to when we, when we face this new world that we're saying we're moving into, the spiritual world, are we really ready for it? Are we ready to move into a place where we can say we're spiritual? I don't think so. I haven't met many people that are willing to do that. Uh, so as a group consciousness, we need to wake up and not wake up. I know it's almost time to go, so I'll start wrapping it up, but we really have to face uh, what we're dealing with, what we created, and where we're really going to go from here. Waiting for aliens to come down to help us or angels to jump out of the sky to help us is not the solution. And it's not going to help you understand death. It's not going to help you understand God. So, again, I will give techniques, and like I said, my my website, www.howtoseegod.org, O-R-G. Uh, my email is hawksblood1, H-A-W-K-S-B-L-O-O-D, number one, at AOL.com. And I do talk to people that email me constantly, and I and I'd rather talk personally on the phone if they want, or Skype. Uh, but I'm a, I'm a realist, and I, after hearing me today, I can hope you understand what I'm trying to say. People are living in a delusion, and the illusions of what has been created by other people living in that. So it's time to face who you are as soul, understand what you are as soul, and then you can move into a higher level of awareness. You don't have to wait for this wave to come down and turn you into that. Because nobody turns into anything unless they allow it. And if you want to become spiritual, you really have to work on that directly. So I'm glad I got to talk today. Uh, please feel free to email me anytime. I I do come on and show as often as I can. Uh, I will come back. The next time, I promise, we'll be doing just techniques and, and, and ways to find out about what's right, what spirits you work with, which is really important, what spirits are really guiding you and protecting you, not who you want to call them. Because Gabriel and Michael aren't the only protecting angels that work with everybody on this planet. There's multiple, multiple amounts of numbers of beings that do, and you really should find out which one's right for you. So I'm glad I had to talk today. I uh, hope you got something out of it. And please, if you didn't call me, I'll try to take it further. Okay, well, I certainly will be in touch about our next show. And if I have any questions, and I'm pretty sure Gerald wrote down your email address uh he probably plans to contact you about your books, and unless I miss my guess, I'm just guessing on that one. Uh, Tom, as usual, it's been a pleasure to have you here. You do a fantastic job of speaking. Um, I may have an opening coming up here in February, but I don't want to go into it right now because uh, I want to get the show wrapped up before it uh, overlaps the uh, second hour because at Daily Motion, it uh, messes it up, in other words. Um but always glad to have you. And I want to remind everybody, in addition to his website, he just quoted, don't forget to come to www.paranormalpalace.com and join up the membership spree. Gives you access to groups, forums, blogs, chat, uh, the media, everything involved in it. The membership is just there for 
keeping control of spam so that you people don't get harassed by it. Um, I'm with Tommy. You can't fill everything, although I do like to put advertising up on my site. <laughs> um, I'm going to call this show here a wrap. I want to thank everybody who came for listening. You, you're what keeps my show going. And I hope to see you guys, the ones that don't listen here, over here so we can have more people in chat. And don't forget to tell everybody about my show and pass my link around. And don't forget to pass Tommy's link around. And everybody, y'all have a good weekend. And Joe, did you have any last minute things you want to add in on that? I just wanted to thank Tommy for um, just coming here and, and chatting with us all. And, and uh, Tommy, it was very enlightening. And, and I, I want to thank you because you've really brought some things to my eyes and uh, you've opened them. And there's some things that you said that I'm very intrigued and interested in, in pursuing. So thank you, sir. Okay. Well, thank you. And like I said, do call me and email me. We'll stay in touch. Yes, sir. Thank you. All righty. In that case, guys, let's go ahead and call this one a wrap while we're still on time. And um, yep. let's all of us make sure we stay in touch for the future. Good night, everybody, and y'all take care for the weekend.